Hey guys, it's Tina and I am back for a tutorial and this one is literally years in the making, I kid you not. I've wanted to do this specific look for such a long time since I bought the eyesh this eyeshadow here from NARS. It's the Ultramar eyeshadow, it came out years ago and I'm now getting around to doing a look with it so yeah go figure but it's a bright intense bold electric blue smoky eye and if you want to see this look then stay tuned and I'll talk to you soon so here's an up close view of the look that we are going for so let's get right into it so I already filled in my eyebrows and now I'm going in with a bit of concealer under my brows and this is the NARS radiant creamy concealer in the shade caramel and I'm just using the concealer to create a defined shape to my brows as well as add a highlight on our brow bone area. And we're also going to use the concealer as kind of a base on our brow bone area as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and blend that in using my Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush just to make sure there are no harsh lines and we blend everything out seamlessly. Next I'm grabbing a matte skin tone transition color. And I'm going to apply that in my crease area using my IT Cosmetics number 119 all over shadow brush just to create a base in the crease for blending out the darker blue shades. Next I'm going in with a deeper shade. This is the M660 Speculus also from Makeup Forever and it's just a couple of shades darker than the M650 Cookie. And I'm just going to blend that a little bit in my crease area to add some dimension to the look. Now that we have those blending shades down, I'm going in with a secondary base. This is my Sephora Colorful Shadow and Liner Pencil in the shade My Boyfriend's Jeans, which is a matte, really rich blue shade. It's actually really beautiful. So I'm going to apply that just all over my lid and then I'm going to work quickly to blend out the edges of that color using a Zoeva 225 Eye Blender brush. This is just a small dome shaped brush and it's going to help us to blend out the edges of that color before the color actually sets down because it is waterproof, it will set, it won't budge and then you can blend it out. So work quickly with this product. Next I'm going in with the star of the show. This is from NARS. It's the Outremer eyeshadow. It is a matte, rich, like velvety, blue suede color. It is so gorgeous. I'm going to grab that on a 234 Luxe Smoky Shader from Zoeva. And this brush is a little bit more of a rough texture, so it picks up color really well. If you want to pick up color and pack it on, you need a brush that's not too soft. You want it to be a little bit rough. And as you can see, the color really picks up over that base and it picks up because of that brush. Now I'm grabbing a J142 blender brush from Hakuhodo and I'm going around the edges. Now this brush on the other hand is very soft, so it's going to help us blend out and fade out the edges of that bright blue color. So just go ahead, go around the edges in circular motions, windshield wiper motions, just to blend it out and bring it up into the crease. You will notice that the eyeshadow may be a little bit tricky to blend, so what you're going to do is grab the blending brush and pick up some of the color itself and apply it right at the edge. And this is going to help blend out the color and create a gradient effect because this blue color can be very difficult to blend as well as any kind of deep smoky shade. They can be tricky to blend, especially matte colors. They just want to stay put. So just pick up a little bit of color on the blending brush itself and go around the edges. Remember, don't pick up too much. Just pick up a little bit and that's going to help to blend and fade that color out a little bit more and create that gradient that we're looking for. So just keep going back and forth. This can take a while. So just pack your patience and go back and forth. Keep blending until it looks nice and seamless. Now after you're happy with the blending, which I am, I'm going to go ahead and grab a dark navy blue. This is China Blue Eyeshadow, also from NARS, and it is my favorite NARS eyeshadow, hands down. It is also my favorite navy blue. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on the outer lid area using the 234 brush from Zoeva. And just deposit the color, then grab the blend and brush that J142 from Hakuhodo and blend out the edges. And that will just add a little bit of depth to that outer V area so it looks a little bit more smoky, but it won't be like a huge contrast at all. 
Now I'm grabbing that all over shadow brush from IT Cosmetics that we used for those transition shades and I'm just going to go back and forth over the edge of the colors in the crease so they blend a little bit more effortlessly and it doesn't look like a harsh blue line. So yeah. Now that we made it through the blend and let's go ahead and highlight the inner chair duct area. I'm using Crystal Avalanche eyeshadow from MAC which is a shimmery white shade with a blue shift to it so it's gonna complement the blue that we have on the eyes and I applied that using an elf contour brush and now I'm going to grab some of the blue eyeshadow on that same elf brush and just blend it towards the inner tear duct area and that's gonna give a little bit more blue appeal to that inner tear duct so it will blend in with the crystal avalanche and it won't look as intensely white it will look more blue now once it blends in with the blue on the lid and something that always happens with bright matte eyeshadows, you will lose a little bit of it as you blend. So go back in with the 234 brush from Zoeva and pack that blue eyeshadow back onto the center of the lid. Grab the blending brush and go around the edges just to make sure nothing is out of place, everything is blended. So now you still have the intensity on the lid, but it is nice and blended. For the lower lash line, it's really simple. Just go back in with that Sephora eyeshadow pencil that we use. Line the lower waterline. Some of that will go on your lower lash line, so just don't be too neat with this. And then I'm going in with a MAC 242 brush, which is just a small shader brush. I'm going along the lower lash line where that extra product is and just blending it out so it's nice and faded. And then pick up some of that blue eyeshadow on the same brush, that 242, and go under the lower lashes and blend that color into the lower lash line. Yes, we got that done. Now grab some of the Crystal Avalanche on the same brush and apply it to the inner lower lash line. So right by that chair duct area, just to tie everything together. Now that that's all said and done, you can go ahead and apply your mascara. I'm using the Clinique Chubby Lash Mascara. And then for my lower lashes, I'm going to use my Urban Decay Perversion Mascara. This is a 100 point perk from Sephora, so it's in a smaller tube, which makes it easier to apply. Then I have to apply false eyelashes with such a bold look, so I'm using my Style 136 from Beauty Sense which has an invisible band, so it's nice and easy to apply, but it will still give nice fullness to my lashes. And let's go ahead and apply a highlight before we forget. And you can use any highlight you want, but I am going to just grab my Undressed Eyeshadow from the Lorac Unzipped Gold Palette. It is one of my favorite highlights. It's intense, but if you blend it out just right, it looks really nice under the brows. Any highlight you have will do. Don't have to use this one at all. So here go the eyes completely done. So let's go ahead and finish up the rest of the face. Let's all right guys, so let's go ahead and finish up the face and I'll mention the foundation I used. It's the Lancome Taint Visionaire Skin Correcting Foundation in the shade 450 Suede N. And I apply that all over my skin. Not my favorite foundation, but I decided to go ahead and use up some of my foundations in my collection. Even though they may not be my favorite, I can still use them for filming. I don't know. It's a good shade match, but I just don't like the finish of it so much because I find that I have to set it a lot with powder. Speaking of which, I set that with the NARS Soft Velvet Loose Powder in the shade Mountain. I just pounce that over my skin with a beauty blender just to set everything in place. And Mountain, for me, is the perfect skin tone match. And I'm going to grab the shade um, Heat in the pressed version. It's also from NARS, but it's a darker version of Mountain. It's a darker shade. And I'm going to grab that on my B531 brush. It's a large brush from Hakuhodo. And I'm going to blend this along my hairline as kind of a bronzer contouring powder. It's going to deepen up the extremities of my face. It's not going to do some any kind of extreme contouring, but it's going to add some shadow to my skin because it is a darker powder. So along my hairline area, just to blend it in, 
and along my cheekbone area. So I'm creating a slight shadow on my cheekbone, not an extreme highlight, I mean contour, but still creating a little bit of dimension and also on my jawline area. And that's gonna give my skin more of a dimensional effect. So the outskirts will be a little bit darker than the center of my face. And then for my blush, I'm going in with a bright, bold pink color. This is from Becca, it's the shade Hyacinth. It's their mineral blushes and be very careful with this color. If you have it or if you get it, it's so bold in your face and intense. You need very little, I mean very, very little of this color. I'm grabbing that on my Chikohoto GSN number no. four brush and I'm grabbing the littlest amount. I'm tapping it off just to get rid of the excess and then I'm dotting it on my cheeks and then blending for the gods. I am blending this out so it doesn't look too intense on my skin but it still gives a flush of color. I don't like bold intense blushes but I do like a pop of color. I like an in a, a nice bold color but not bold, like intense in pigmentation. So I blended that out really, really well. And then I'm going in with a highlight product that I just picked up. It is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's one of their illuminators. It's the shade Peach Nectar. Whew. It's so pretty. It's the peachy shade. And some people were saying that it seemed like it wouldn't work as a highlight for them because it wasn't light enough. But I think because of the, um, the shimmery effect to it, it will definitely work as a highlight for a lot of skin tones. My skin tone it does work as you'll see you see a glow on my skin it is really beautiful it's a shimmery shade but when you blend it out lightly it has um a peachy undertone so it's not going to be too intense like peach it's not going to look like a blush but it does have a peach undertone just use it very lightly and to apply this i'm going to grab my wayne goss number no. two brush this is a very soft light fluffy brush and this is not going to pick up a lot of product because it is so soft and fluffy and it's going to blend it out nicely. It's going to make it a really diffused color on my cheek. It's not going to be too intense. I'm just going to pop that on the high points of my cheeks and blend it on top. And you can see it's going to give a nice glow to the skin and you can go start out very slow. Start out with a little and build it up as you like, you know, as, to get the intensity that you are comfortable with. But that is all I am comfortable with, not too much. And this color, this product is really easy to blend out and like diffuse it without being too overwhelming. And then for my lips, I'm going to go in with a pinky neutral shade. This is the shade Fig Luster from Sephora. It's one of their Luster Matte Longwear Lip Colors. And not many people mention these. And I think they're so great. They're a great formula from Sephora. They're cheaper than the $20 cost that most liquid lipsticks are going for now. It's $14. Get it from Sephora. They have a bunch of different shades and I do have a few. I should probably share them with you guys. Let me know if you're interested in that. This is Fig Luster. It's a pinky nude shade. They don't dry down to a flat matte like the Kat Von D lipsticks or the ColourPop ones. They're more of a traditional matte lipstick so they do set down matte. They're long wearing, they last a long time on your lips, but they don't dry them out or they don't crack and peel off like some long wear matte lipsticks, liquid lipsticks can these days. So I'm just going to apply that all over my lips. Beautiful shade again. I highly recommend it. I really like the formula. And then just to darken up the edges a bit because I find with my darker skin tone, I do need a darker lip liner sometimes just to make sure everything is copacetic and it does blend in with you know, my lips and stuff. So I'm grabbing the shade Cyber World from MAC. It's a lip pencil. It's a dark burgundy shade. And I'm just going to apply it very lightly at the edges of my lips. And I'm not doing any kind of over intense lining with this. I am really just using it to shade the outside perimeter of my lips. It's going to give it a more pouty effect, but it also works to blend the lighter shade in with my natural skin color and natural lip color so it looks a little bit you know more seamless on my lips so that's what we're gonna do so there you go guys that is the finished look and i absolutely love this look it's bold it's intense it's in your face but at the same time it's relatively simple like i only used what two eye two three eyeshadows to create it you know apart from the blending shades which everyone should have in their collection anyway this was the star of the show, the Ultramare eyeshadow, and I've wanted to do a blue smoky eye with this for the longest. When I picked it up, that's what I wanted it for, this intense blue smoky eye, and 
I just love the effect. Again, you're going to need to pack it onto the lids to really get the color payoff, but it is worth it at the end of the day. If you swatch it, it's going to come off patchy on dry skin. It just, it's a very chalky, like patchy matte shade, but you can definitely make it work. As you see, we did it here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting. And I will leave a full list of the products used down below. Always leave a full list down below. You can check it out. If I miss something, just, you know, mention it in the comments and I'll add it. Sometimes I do miss some stuff. You know what I mean? So thank you guys again. And links to my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook are also down there. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye.